one, did hurricane season show up early this year or what's the dealio? We got dust storms blowing around, sideways, rain, big rain, broken trees. Look at this thing right here. Busted off tree just hanging out in the road for no reason. It was beautiful and sunshine yesterday and now today the trees are being stripped of their leaves. Uh, go figure, Florida weather is what it is. The irony of this is I need to uh, do a uh, an AC job on a Silverado today because the guy's AC system is uh, not functioning. Uh, it appears there's some kind of a leak. We got to track it down and see what to do about it. It died at the worst possible inconvenient moment as uh, as car breakdowns tend to do. Um, the owner of this vehicle is a good friend of mine and I need to get him fixed up ASAP because he needs this truck. He needs climate control in this truck because it is Florida and with the exception of today, of today uh, it's usually a sauna around here. So we got to get this thing fixed up and ready to rock and roll ASAP. So let's get the shop opened up and get to work. All right, it's a super busy day. So I'm kind of skipping ahead the pleasantries in the intro here. We're pulling in this uh, 2017 Chevrolet Silverado. It's a 1500. I believe it's got the 5.3 liter with 63,715 approximate miles on the odometer. Got the AC kind of going right now. Uh, thermal meter indicates to us that we're making, well, like 70, about 70, 71 degrees. Yeah, we're, we're very underperforming here. So. Uh, we've got some kind of a leak. I believe the system is low on charge. The fact that it is cooling tells me that the compressor does run and it is exchanging heat, but we're not doing that very efficiently. So I imagine we've got a leak or maybe we've got a compressor that's compressing low pressure. Let's pop the hood real quick and find out here on this, uh, on this blue silvery Rado. Let's just do some uh, quick visual confirmations that our compressor is in fact compressing so it's going to be located on the passenger side of the engine here way down at the bottom yeah we can see that the compressor clutch hub is turning that compressor is running so there is enough refrigerant in the system to uh at least get the compressor to engage that suggests to me that we are probably low on refrigerant. So what I'm gonna do is turn on the black light feature. See that right there? Got a little black light. This thing should react to any UV dye that's in the AC system. And we can use that to identify any potential leaks. So we're gonna start with the service ports. Those tend to be a pretty popular place for leakages. And I see no dye. The second service port on this truck, it's kind of a bear to get to. It's located way down by the compressor underneath these two heater core lines right here. So I've kind of, I'm gonna try to reach back from the front side here to get that cap off. And hopefully I can do this without getting my arm stuck in the fan. Fan's right there, it's close. Uh, there's our cap. Pull that guy out of here. And coming down with the light, I do not see any dye at that service port. So we don't have service valves leaking. Let's see if we, we can't get the light on the compressor. I'm not sure how well this black light picks up on the camera, but when we find the leak, it should glow like a bright uh, incandescent type of green. TXV, taking a look there. No, nope, no leak. Uh, we did see some green, but that's actually just a piece of paper. See how that's uh, reflective on the paper? It's a similar situation right over there in the back. No leak on the expansion valve. Uh, oh, you know what? I recall these Silverados having, having a factory built defect in the condenser. There was like a, a spot weld somewhere on the condenser and it was a major source of a leak due to a very uh, very crappy build strategy that was employed by General Motors. I actually made a short about that, uh, what, two, three years ago when I was working at the dealership. I actually, I threw a hissy fit over it when I discovered uh, their shady build practices on these condensers. 
And considering that these condensers are like a seven hour replacement job in total, I was very upset to find out what GM had been doing. I will leave a link to that video down in this video's description. You guys can go back and revisit it if you have not uh, yet seen it. It's an oldie, but a goodie. Anyway, if I recall, it was here on the driver's side is where the defect occurred. And, oh yeah, look at that right there. There she is, see it? See all that bright green business right there? Yep, here, let's turn on the regular illuminator. And I'll show you what we're talking about. Oh yeah, clear as day. Do you guys see, you see the condenser right here, the radiator looking piece? Do you see that accumulator dryer tube right there? Well, right here, that tube is welded on to the end tank on that condenser. It develops a crack due to thermal cycling between this tube and that tube right there, right here at the weld. And that is, uh, that's where our leak's at. If we look real close, we can even see some fluid saturation around that affected area. We'll turn on the black light again. And we'll just revisit that glow. Oh yeah, look at that. Super shiny bright glow. That's definitely our problem. So we found the leak on the system. Uh, unfortunately, that's a rather labor intensive job. It's not as easy as one would think. It's not easy as they used to be back in the day, but I know how to get through it and we're gonna try to beat the clock on this one. And by the way, quick disclaimer, I'm not charging my guy seven hours to do this because I found out how to do it in less than seven hours. Dealership tricks. Um, I need to get some lumens uh, set up under the hood here. We're gonna pull the top cover off. We have to pull the intake off of it. Air box comes out. Uh, it's kind of a lot of pieces to disassemble, but we're going to get through this super quick like. So, stay tuned because this is going to be a very good video. Opening Z hood. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look who that guy is. So, real quick Chevy tip. We can take our uh, fuse box cover off flip it over and now we've got a convenient built-in little tray to put our uh, our components such as uh, these little plastic clips that hold down the shroud cover. So what we need to do here is get into these guys with a, with a trim tool, pop these little clips out and then we've got to pull this entire cover assembly off the top of the uh, radiator core support. Once this guy is removed, we can get to the lines and the mounts to the radiator. Yeah, take a look at that. Spent all that effort taking off this cover and we still have no access uh, to anything uh, inside of the area we need to. This thing is so shrouded that we cannot get access to that condenser from this area. I did need to take that cover off because we have to get the transmission cooler line off of the condenser on that side and on that side. Those are not the AC lines. The AC lines are actually buried down inside of the hole right there and we have to get those from the back side underneath the air box. So disassembly shall continue. We're gonna do this at rapid pace. Let's go ahead and remove the uh, intake system next and the air filter. We need to get the two PCV lines disconnected. One here and one, now that one's being stubborn. One right there, got that one. That was a little loose. Should have had to have uh, unscrewed that right there. No matter. So now, let's go over here to the passenger side. We'll get the mass airflow connector disconnected. Uh-oh, lost the retainer clip. I'll find it, I think. I believe it went back here somewhere. I'm looking around back there, I haven't seen it. Um, I believe it might have ended up underneath of this uh, surge tank, so. We'll have to get after that in a minute. The uh, surge tank does have to be disconnected and moved out of the way, I believe, to get the proper access. Let's get the bolts out for the air box lid. And then the entire intake tubing assembly will come free. So we've got just uh, four screws here. 
sometimes these are Torx bits and sometimes they are Phillips head or eight millimeter screws. GM likes to change things up. Consistency is not really the, the strong suit, I suppose. It's more of that uh, shaving of the corporate pennies. There we go. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pull these out all the way. A lot of times you can leave them in the, in the lid. Uh, I kind of like to remove them because if they fall out, they're difficult to replace because you can see it's just this very coarse threaded uh, plastic screw. I mean, the screw is not plastic, but it's designed to run into plastic. Throw those guys over in the fuse block cover. And we can just go ahead and sneak this entire assembly right out. Come here. There we go. That's our lid. How's this filter looking while we're here? Yeah, we could use one. Couldn't hurt. Yeah, there's a bunch of dirt and stuff down inside of the pleats in there. You guys see that? That's nasty. Okay, let us remove the lower section of the air filter box. Now this thing is pressed in with some plastic pins and uh, it's held in place with some grommets. So we just kind of pop the thing out and set it aside. Okay, now for kind of the funnish part, I need to get the uh, fan motors disconnected here because we have to pull this, uh, this fan package out in order to gain some clearance to fit the radiator because rather than taking the front bumper off and the whole front clip off to get to the condenser, I'm gonna pull the radiator out and we're gonna do this from the inside. That's the, uh, the time saving trick that uh, I employ to make this a not seven hour job. So we've got uh, both fan motors disconnected. The coolant hose is disconnected from its bracket on the fan shroud. I need to grab a, uh, a 10 mil ratchet in the socket and pull the four bolts off of this fan shroud assembly so we can pull it up and lift the thing free. While we're here, I'll pull this uh, surge tank overflow tube out of the way as well. We'll just set that over here on the top side of our engine. If it's gonna stay. Stay where I want you to stay. Or not. See, you make a plan and then the world laughs at you. There we go. All right, it's electric ratchet time here. Let's get these four bolts out and remove the fan shroud. Or fan assembly. There you go right there. And the next one, I think it's down. Yeah, that one's, that one's way down there. That's hard to, or no, no, no. Maybe that just has a clip. Yeah, that just has a, uh, little sliding clip device so yeah only two bolts my memory has deceived me oh don't lose my bolt there we go throw that in the tray we'll collect the other one that guy goes in the tray and now I should be able to take this whole fan shroud assembly and lift it free and clear. So I believe I've got all the clips and hoses and whatnot detached. It's got to come out kind of at an angle because there is one hose, like an oil cooler line that captures it down below. And it's, it's hung up pretty bad right now, I think. Oh, yep, yep, one more clip. Hang on. I, uh, I missed one. There's a plastic retainer on the oil cooler line that secures the line. Pardon my noggin and my face. This is a close quarters combat type of situation here. Get in there. There we go. Clip is disconnected. Now, shroud comes out. It's 
just getting hung up on that little wing thing, the little mount bracket and the hose. There we go. One radiator fan assembly removed. You stay there. Now, the reason that we did that is we're gonna unbolt the radiator from the support and pick it up out of its mounting pegs at the lower support and then scooch it backwards and then lean it. Because once it's leaned back, we can unbolt the condenser and the condenser is gonna come through up and out this area right here. Okay, one 13 mil coming out. Okay, and the second one over on the passenger side. Let's get that one removed. In the tray. So now what we've achieved is that the entire cooling package is just kind of loose and flip-flopping hanging out in this location. So, what we need to do next is disconnect the transmission lines from the condenser, and then we will uh, get the actual AC lines disconnected from the condenser. And that's gonna happen down inside of this hole, way back there. I'll have to get a 13 millimeter wrench on that fitting, and we also gotta get a 10 mil for this bracket, which is, kind of hard to do because the bolt is pointing towards the front of the vehicle and we have to gain access to it from the rear of the vehicle so we need a super tiny ratchet to reach inside of that little hole there you know at some point i better get the ac machine out and uh, recover this refrigerant it's uh we're not gonna get too far if there's still a little bit of refrigerant left in the system so let me get all that stuff pulled out of there while i continue this disassembly i know it's super low so it shouldn't uh shouldn't take long at all Plug it in, plug it in. My extension cord has a light on it, so you know it's good. All right, let's power this thing up. Get the hoses connected. And we will begin recovery. Okay, let's get these uh, trans cooler lines disconnected here. We've got these little plastic shrouds. Push that guy back. Now, it can't fall off the line because the end of the line is flared. But what can fall off is this little retainer clip in here, which is uh, very difficult to remove without losing it. So what I need to do is get behind it. There, there is a tool to actually just release these clips, but my preference is to remove them. I found that it's a little easier to just take them out. Uh, the risky part is, is it's also very easy to lose it when you take it out because they tend to ping, fly off, and go into nowhere land. Okay, so what I'll do next is just get a hold of that line with some curvy needle noses and just apply some, some wiggles and some pressure and slide that line out and disconnect it. Yeah, you may ask, why is there transmission lines running to the AC condenser? And we're going to get to that in a minute. This is part of the design defect of uh, this entire cooling package here that uh, the GM didn't fix. Well, they did fix it, but they fixed it with a circular saw. It, it, don't worry, you're going to see. I'll show you. I'll show you their factory repair job for a design flaw uh, in their system. I, uh, I was actually looked at like I had two heads because when I found this out at the dealership, I threw an absolute hissy fit over it and everyone was just like, well, that's just how it is. It's normal. And I said, no, it's not normal. This is crookery and thievery and nonsense. And we're all complicit to the crime and nobody seemed to care. I was, I was on my own morally on that one, but you're going to see, wait till I get this thing out. You'll, you're going to see exactly the source of my rage uh, and why I, uh, I no longer appreciated GM for what they did in this situation. And my real reason is, is again, it took a, it's a seven hour job to, uh, to perform this repair. And so we were charging money for this. 
So not only is there a design flaw, but their fix uh, was a half effort at best, and it was a super cheap effort with a circular saw. And uh, then we were charging thousands of dollars to install these piece of crap parts in people's brand new trucks. Because this, uh, this flaw happened on almost every single one of these Silverados that were produced. So let me know if you guys, any of you had a, uh, a Silverado of this body style, 2017, 18, 16, 15, that uh, experienced a similar uh, AC system failure. Let me know if it was the condenser or if it was something else. But most of them, it's gonna be the condenser. Anyway, I'm trying to wiggle this, uh, this line out of here. This one's a little stubborn. It's not wiggling the way it needs to be jiggling. I'll try to get it from the back here. Come on now, come out. Two-handed. Pliers. There we go. You go over here. That stays on. Okay, so now what I need to do is I have to pick this radiator up. The bottom corners here and over here, they have these pegs that sit down inside of big rubber round grommets. We need to pick this up out of those pegs and then scooch it back. And that's gonna give us access uh, to the bracketry on the front of, uh, of the condenser. Okay. So I've got both sides kind of pulled up here. That's what we needed. That's the space that we're gonna have to use to actually extract this uh, condenser once it's ready to come out. Let's pull some shrouding off next. It's just clipped on. Just pop this stuff upwards. De-clip everything. I know y'all can't see very well. It's dark in here. Even with all my illuminators around, it's uh, still kind of dark. Oh. Okay. So I have the top section of the shroud fully disconnected. This is the condenser shroud right here. That guy is removed and now we can finally see the top of the AC condenser right here in front of the radiator. Okay, so point straight down from where we are. This is the bracketry right here for the air filter box. I'm going to pull this out just for easier access. It's uh, only four 10 mil fasteners here. Easy peasy. Nice and not sleazy. It's part sleazy. And I don't like it. I don't like it because it's a cheap design flaw that never got fixed. Hey, why is there engine coolant here? Uh oh. We probably have a leak in our surge tank. Another little common problem. I wonder. Yeah, this might be a leaker at the surge tank somewhere. These things like to develop a crack in them, and then when they heat up and pressurize, they start seeping, uh, seeping some coolant out. There's a little bit of coolant right here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pull that out and check on that. Okay, so the AC machine is done recovering the refrigerant. So now we can disconnect the, uh, the AC lines from the condenser. So what I need to do here is sneak in and get a hold of this 13 millimeter nut on that manifold bracket there and get that nut off to separate the lines. Let's get some illumination going here. Yeah, this is a, not a filming friendly job, but what's cool about it is it gives me an opportunity to continue to test the efficacy of, uh, is that the right word, efficacy? 
of um, the zero drive ratchet. That's the, the no backlash ratchet. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, this is the gearless zero drive. It's a prototype ratchet that I have in my possession that I've been checking out. I'm trying to put it through its paces. And I ultimately want to see if it's going to work in the field, which I do believe it is going to be a resounding success. There will be more to come on those ratchets later. Like I said, I'm putting it through its paces to see if I can break it, see if it's useful, and see if it has like a very, very specific niche. Uh, reason being is it's a toothless ratchet that uses a, a magnetic device inside to which I do not fully understand at this point in time, but it does not, uh, doesn't have any rebound or backlash. So after you make your turn, when you go back to ratchet to reset, it doesn't have any clicks or any play in there. It's immediate engagement uh, as it tries to return to uh, its forward position. So anyway, we've got the lines disconnected, but they're still a little stuck together. So I'm gonna go in there with a trim tool, kind of pry that line outwards. Get it separated there, there we go. Now the way this works, we've got one line that has the bracket on it, and then that bracket goes over the second line. So we got one bracket that holds two lines together. It's kind of a pain in the behind to reassemble later on, but uh, if you know the way it works, it's not that hard to deal with. You just have to get it all lined up, both pieces at once, and then slide them together over the stud and then bolt them down. Uh, anyway, that, uh, let's see, that's disconnected. All we have left to do now is get that 10 millimeter bolt loose on this plastic bracket, this guy right here. See that thing? We need to get that thing loose because that's bolting the AC lines to the radiator. And we need to get that off in order to get this thing to come out. So I need a shallow 10 mil socket uh, and another ratchet. I think I'll use my short stubby ratchet. That's a nine. There's a 10. Mm -hmm. Super duper stubby. Also a niche little ratchet. It's a, it excels for jobs such as this. So what I've got to do See yeah, how this is a little bit difficult to uh, to achieve here. Very limited visual and physical access to the area. Can't see it, can't feel it. I remember the first time I did one of these, it was, oh no. First time I did one of these, it was murder. I didn't know the tactics or the way to do it. Okay. Unclick that guy. I suppose the zero drive ratchet would also, gravity, would also work down inside of this, uh, this little hole down here. However, it's longer than my super stubby ratchet and I prefer the, uh, the shorter one in this scenario. There. Come on, you endless fastener, you. There she is. Bolt coming out. Set that whole business right up there. So now we can unhinge this bracket from the condenser lines. What I mean by that is we've got to, we pull it towards us, which is to your left. Let's see if I can't see on camera. Yeah, see how that's slotted right there? And then it hooks into the lower line down here. We've got to get it off of that slot by rotating it counterclockwise from our vantage point. See that? And then it twists and comes right out. See how that works? 
So now I do believe this condenser is fully disconnected. Next up, we need to disengage these little tabs right here to release the condenser from the radiator. There's one on this side and then one on the other side, and then we can lift the condenser free. So we're going with a trim tool here, push on that little tab and get this, uh, get the tool behind it like so. Then you can pull the condenser upwards and get it off of the, uh, off that little lock tab business, which I think we got it. Yeah, it's off enough. I'll take this guy and pry upwards while simultaneously pushing down on the radiator. Yeah, it's gonna work that thing right out of that, right out of that little clip right there. Come out, there it goes. We released, now we gotta go right over to the driver's side and release the tab again in this location. So I'll push it in. Come on, condenser. out it is one removed condensor okay now I'm gonna show you guys the part that really really pissed me off when I discovered this at the dealership yeah forgive my colorful language but I'm still mad about this years later because GM has yet to solve the problem let me pull this piece of plastic shrouding off right here this is a airflow shroud which we do have to put back on the uh, the replacement unit we unsnap that guy see how that's fitted with the in tank now i mentioned earlier that these ac condensers were uh, built in conjunction or built as part of the transmission cooler so we've got one part number that serves two functions if we look very closely we can see how small the cores are on the ac condenser side but if we go up a little higher they start to get wider right here. This is transmission cooler area right there. See that? And again, we've got a transmission cooler outlet and an inlet over here. So we've got one function right here, then a second function down here. What was happening is there was a bunch of, uh, a bunch of heat transfer between the two components and the transmission temperature was uh, heat soaking the AC system and shutting down the AC. So what they had done when they built this is they had one individual side tank and a second individual side tank which composes of the physical structure for rigidity for this entire assembly well gm found that there was a bunch of heat cycling going on and they decided rather than redesigning this or using two parts they would come in with a saw and they chopped through the tank now understand this tank does have fluid in it here and it has AC refrigerant in it here, but it's capped off internally here and here. So they went in with freaking circular saws and just cut that off to prevent the heat transfer. Now, once they discovered that, they, uh, they sent out a bulletin and they said, um, you know, replace these radiators or condensers with uh, these new cut in half units. And then they had us put tape over this so nobody would ever know. They put like this reflective, uh, 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 what you call it, kind of a, um, like an aluminum tape or something like that. They just put tape over it and, uh, and cover it up effectively, which I, I found that to be horrible. And again, I want to suggest to you to go back and check that link inside of this video subscription on the, the first condenser that I found on this because I was quite upset and I threw a hissy fit over it and I actually got in trouble. But regardless, 
that's what they did and that's the problem or a problem now back to where we started the reason that this unit failed on the ac system side was they uh or the system was not able to be separated over here in this corner because of the uh, the accumulator dryer tube but the the fall the flaw fault the faulty flaw is in the welds right here in this location it uh it it thermal cycles and it expands and contracts and when it does that it creates the crack in that weld right there and that crack forms lets all the refrigerant out and then you have a faulty unit so we've got a design flaw on this component where it fails twice okay so let's go back and revisit our original point of failure we've got the black light fired up again we've got a better view yeah you see all the glow that's all uv reactive refrigerant dye we can tell it's been leaking out everywhere for quite some time. Uh, checking the back side. Yeah, similar situation. She's leaking right there at that little spot weld thing. So I've got a new condenser already on the way, waiting for it to show up. When it gets here, we can reverse procedure, put this thing back together, get it recharged, and get this Silverado back out on the road. I hope my windows are up. Dang! It's hurricane season. Woo! That's nasty. All right, so we're coming back in here. We've had the uh, the new part delivered. It has uh, been unboxed. And uh, what I want to discuss real quick before this goes in is uh, this happens to be one of the few times that the, uh, the aftermarket didn't cheap out and they built a product that exceeded the OEM product. So let's start over here where the, uh, the AC flaw begins. We still, we still have the, um, the receiver dryer slash accumulator tube there's a there's a cap on the bottom and then the desiccant pack is located inside but let's take note on just how beefy the construction is they've got a little piece of aluminum in here welded in all the way down welded down here okay both sides this thing has a massive amount of structure and welds to prevent this exact flaw from reoccurring and if we go over to the hacksaw section uh, of this uh, assembly, we can see they did not hacksaw this guy out. So we still have our transmission cooler, we still have our AC condenser, and you can tell right here and right here they have the caps. Uh, what I believe they did is they filled this area here with some kind of insulation to prevent that heat transfer between this section and this section, but this right here maintains structural integrity of the tank uh, rather than chopping a hole through it and just letting it flip flop all willy nilly like so other than that dimensionally It is uh, roughly the exact same size, but this is a far more uh, robust and improved design uh, Over the OEM design and what's annoying is GM is still producing this style of Condenser assembly to this day. They're aware of it and they don't care. They still have the design flaw Which is why we did not get a GM component. I got a car quest aftermarket uh, unit to replace this with. So what we need to do now is just drop this thing back into place. We'll fit all the shrouding and whatnot onto it and uh, we'll get it reconnected, hooked up and recharged with the machine. All right, condensing unit coming in here. We've got the uh, plastic shrouds on. They fit near perfectly. This one's a little bit off. Might have to cut it some. Oh, nope, got it. That's on all the way. Yep, they designed that to fit with the factory shrouding, which is good. So what I've got to do is just push the radiator back and just lower this condenser down into its new home. You gotta pay mind to the, the lines over here on this side. They need to be maneuvered past a couple pieces of frame rail and whatnot, but it slips right into position there. Beautiful. I like you. So now I've just got to line up the uh, little tabs here. There's tabs at the bottom and gravity. That was a. Uh, oh, it's gone. Yeah, there's these little tabs here at the top we saw earlier, and then the couple at the bottom. Just got to get all that stuff lined up and clip them in, and we're in business. Okay, that side's in. You heard the little click. And then this side. 
Let's maneuver that a little bit that way there. Okay, we're looking good. That tab is lined up and the bottom one is lined up. So now just give that a push downwards, lock it in yeah, a little bit farther. I got about a quarter of an inch to go here to get it, uh, get it all lined up. Okay, so I've got this thing lined up down in its brackets. Next up, I need to get the uh, upper shroud into place and get all the shroud pieces connected. So we just drop this thing in and set it back down on top of the radiator and condenser. And it just kind of snaps into place here. You can see there's a, an area where it will clip into the side shroud pieces in an attempt to create a decent seal. Might as well go ahead and pull that guy out. Get this thing prepped up and lined up to, to plug in here. Yeah, getting the plastics to fit is uh, somewhat difficult. Tap these guys down, little clips. The top shroud, uh, snap it in, a little dark in there. Snap the shroud in on the top to the lower section. And then this side, that one's about lined up, I think. Turn that sideways some. Snap the shroud in. Yep, yeah, we're engaged right here in the clip. So the uh, upper shroud is attached. The lower shroud at the bottom of the radiator, that's all lined up as well. You see the little clips are clipped in. Good even spacing, and the clips are clipped in on this side as well. So now we need to take the uh, whole radiator, pick it up, slide it in, drop the pins into the grommets, and then we can fasten the thing uh, back into position. I'm gonna go ahead and install the brackets and get the lines down there connected. Uh, you guys saw what it was like to disconnect it and it's quite cumbersome to reconnect, so I'm just gonna do that off camera. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm putting in that little bracket bolt now. Once this guy's tight, we'll hook up the lower line. Give me back my 10, 10 millimeter. Always trying to get lost. Here, let's go ahead and get the other transmission line clipped into position here before we put this thing back where it lives pull the cap out take our line go ahead and snap that guy right in there we go snapped in and then you always put this little plastic business back on just to make sure that clip can't come out if that plastic thing doesn't go on then that clip is not fully seated and the thing will come apart uh, at some point later on in the future. And that would be horrendously bad. Here, let's go ahead and get the radiator support bolts back in. We got one right here. And of course the other one over on the driver's side here. I know that the bottom pins are in position because these top bolts line right up, no problem. If the top bolts don't line up, then you're misaligned out at the bottom so you got to recheck the shroud or the two alignment pins all right a little bit of a cleaner action down here on that uh, radiator because there was some uh some drippage that came out of transmission fluid we can break clean off that uh coolant that spilled down there too see what all that i ordered a uh a new surge tank so we're gonna stop this coolant leak before it even becomes a problem okay 13 mil Leakage and another. There we go. Now let's go around here to the front. We can check our shroud action going. Got a nice good seal everywhere, all the way around. The shroud's all in position. Got some more fluid down there, so we'll hit that with some. Uh, very clean as well. I'm gonna hose this off when we're done, but we'll give the give the water a head start to clean that off. There we go. All right, now let's go fetch the fans and get these things dropped back down into their position. Right here. Okay, coming in. Sneak this guy down in here. Past the hoses, past the vines, past. The oh, you know what? I forgot the uh, condenser lines for the AC. However, I think I can start. 
I think I can still reach them with uh, this fan in position. Yeah, I just looked over and I saw the line just kind of hanging out, sitting there, not doing anything. Anyway, here's one of the bolts. That's gonna secure the fan on that side and I'll throw the other bolts in while I'm at it and then reach down and get those uh, condenser AC lines back in. Oh, it's mildly embarrassing. I forget to connect the piece that I was here to change. Oopsie. So here, we'll grab, there's the 13. That's the nut for the lines. Can't see down there. It's dark in the catacombs of the Chevrolet. See how we're gonna do this. Flashlight. Oh, I'm all butterfingers all of a sudden. Is that piece of pizza that I just ate? There, we get all these guys lined up. Pressed into that little manifold. I gotta get the little plugs out of it. Some remove those types of plugs before installing the part. I got a habit of leaving them in just to prevent some any kind of contamination. Uh, no, I didn't change uh, those two little O-rings on the lines. It's okay. I can reuse them. Uh, plus, the uh, aftermarket radiator didn't didn't have one, so I don't have one to install. Uh, it is what it is, but it's fine. They're not going to leak. I promise. Yeah, that's uh, that's one of those judgment calls that uh, we talked about. The other day. Okay, got uh, got the nut on there. Uh, plus workshop manual at GM did not require us to uh, to replace those when doing this job. So it's it's okay. Okay, 13 mil ratchet or 13 mil socket rather on a ratchet. I'm gonna get a hold of that nut. Yeah, the zero drive works better in this application. There's a lot of backlash slop for uh, the amount of space I'm working with here. Mm, almost one more turn, I think. Click, kickage, there we go. Okay, so now those guys are on. Let's turn on the vacuum on the machine. Pull this into a vacuum, we'll do 15 minutes. Since it is a humid, rainy, not sunshiny day. And it's rocking and rolling. Good to go. Okay, 10 millimeter bolt. That's on our fan and fan shroud. Second one right over here. Good to go. Now, we need to make sure all of the, uh, the wires and the hoses are properly reconnected to the fan. So we're gonna dig out the fan motor connectors. Get that back in there. That's a little safety lock device that I just locked. Hmm, become unlocked please. You stupid thing. There. Let's get this guy snapped into place in its connector, which is shrouded by the fan blades. There are the little fins here, very hard to reach. Oh, plug that guy in. And then the other one. Where's that other one at? Down under the radiator hose here. Come here. Plug that guy in right here in the back of this fan, the bottom. Then there's two mounts for this lower hose. Those get pressed in. Again, they connect to the shroud. There's one there and one there. While we're here, we'll put the transmission line connector back on. That's good.
then the other radiator hose mount slash bracket. That one gets pushed in right there. Beautiful. Everybody's hooked up. I like it. So while we're waiting for that machine, I'm gonna go ahead and evacuate the coolant out of the surge tank right here. We're just gonna suction it out, and then I'm gonna switch the surge tank out with a new one. I, I ordered a replacement, uh, which we have right here in my possession. Fluid evacuator. I'm gonna stick that guy right down in the hole there, and it's gonna suction out all the old coolant. Here it comes. And there it goes. Goodbye, coolant. Down she goes. Okay, so while that's suctioning, we'll grab a 10 millimeter, uh, take the bracket loose, and then remove uh, remove the surge tank. Here, let's pull the clamp off first. Oh, we're done suctioning. Hooray. Get a little deeper in there. Running this hose down into this hose. Yeah. I do have hose plant pliers, but these ones were already in my hand, so we should use these. Pull that guy off. <laughs> There's the other end of our hose. The maximum coolant drainages. So yeah, we get a partial coolant flush out of the deal too. Goes back in there. Get in there. Get in the hole. Yeah. Shut it down. Power down. It's a Venturi vacuum. Okay, two more little hose clamps. Let's wiggle these uh, auxiliary lines off of here. Those are uh, bypass lines back to the radiator and back to the thermostat housing. One more or ten somewhere, maybe? Yeah, it's down here on the, on the back side. Need an extension. Well, how we're in the reassembly phase and I'm taking stuff apart again. Maybe I can find that little red clip for the mass airflow connector. It flew off in this direction somewhere. And no, I don't see it anywhere. Yeah, I think it's gone, guys. Never to be seen again. Yeah, I can't find it. It's okay. All right. Okay, new surge tank with a rando zip tie on the end of it. Let's get rid of that. Fit this thing into its new home down over the stud. There's the nut on the back, you can't see, but it goes over a stud. Okay, got that guy threaded on. And the bolt on the other side, that's gonna go right here. I get a new cap too. Plug the two lines back in, reclamp them. There we go. And then the big hose down at the bottom. Plug that unit in. Oh, come on. The clamp locked in on itself, so it's in the locked position I need to 
I need to unsnap it. I squeezed it too far. Hmm. Bigger pliers. Here, big pliers. I'll just make it do what I want. And yeah, there's a little tab on that and it locked in. There we go. Now I can straighten out that clamp. Oh, I just did it again. Come on, Ray, what are you doing? Definition of insanity, repeating the action more than once, expecting a different result. There we go, now it's on. Okay, next up, time for our free moment. Free, you cannot mix Dex Cool compatible coolant with gold BG coolant, it's the wrong color. Even though it's compatible, it says so on the box. Free. Don't worry, it'll all be red by the time this is over with. Yep, we're glugging down, filling up the hose, getting rid of all the more or the, the air. I said moisture. Fill this back up to our full mark. Not forgetting to spill a bunch of it as I go. Because why not? Making a mess. Throw the cat back on. Cross thread the cat back on. Clickage, cat clickages, good. So now, let's get the intake box and the base back in position here. Then we can get the intake tubing reinstalled. Okay, let's get the bracket slash plate for the air filter box back into position. I also have a new filter coming. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier or here. I've already ordered it and it's already arrived. So yeah, we're facing the engine air filtration element as well due to contaminants. Last one. Beautiful. Good. All right. Let's get the intake tubing back in position here. So I'll start with the filter box. I drop this thing down. And I need to line the grommets up that we can't see. I have it backwards. There we go. Let it drop it around. Now, get the grommets lined up. I can feel it right there. Snap that down in position. Give it a tug and it came out, which means it wasn't in. Uh oh, my AC line is getting stuck there. Okay, that's good. Let's drop the filter down into the air box next. There we go, nice and clean filter. No dirt in the, uh, in the pleats here. Slip this thing into its new home like so. There we go. Okay, the lid's coming in. Next, maybe. Definition of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over. There we go, lid's in place. Here's the four screws. Drop those in their little holes here. I'm not screwing around with these screws this time. We're getting an eight millimeter socket and I'm just gonna run them down. I don't have the patience for uh, sitting here trying to operate these with a screwdriver. I had the patience when we got started, but now it is running thin. Okay, got an eight on a stick, on a spinny stick. High risk operation, you can strip these screws out by the way. So if you use power tools on this, turn it till it stops and that is all. We don't need a bunch of torque here. We just need to screw it down so it touches.
fix. That one's good. Probably go ahead and plug in this mass airflow right now while we're here. Snap that guy in, good to go. Okay, the rest of the intake is coming into position here. Just kind of plug that guy right into the throttle body and plug it in right over here to the lid. Good, same eight millimeter. Again, right here on the clamp that wasn't tight. Okay, PCV hose. Snap that one in. Another one on the left. Snap that in. Double check them. You get a mass airflow code if they're not seated all the way, and this one wasn't. It didn't have that snap to it. Okay, we're getting there. I've got the machine setting in the charge. I just need to clear my goodies off the top of the radiator here and get that uh, that cover back in. And uh, let me fire this thing up and see how it, it's going to cool. Tools, tools. Tools, tools, tools. Backwards. It's the backwards cover. Pins in, push them. Last one. And of course, now we may take the fuse box cover and put that back in, uh, in its home. Snap it in. Good to go. Beautiful. Nearly complete. Check it out. It's all reassembled again. Hey. Okay, charge is going in. We have 0 0.550 kilograms of refrigerant. And once that's in, we can fire it back up and to see what kind of temperatures we have uh, we have achieved. Well, actually, there's not much that I've done here that's gonna affect the temperature. We pretty much fixed a leak, but, you know, we wanna make sure it's cold on the way out. If it's not cold, then we have to diagnose why it's not cold, but I, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be cold. Unless I have failed massively. Anyway, charge is going in, filling it on up. We're at two kilograms as we speak. 3.5. 0.35 kilograms later, and the charge will be finished. Okay, so since I did a low side charge, I'm sorry, a high side charge, and this low side connector is an incredible bear to reach, I'm gonna go ahead and just disconnect the low side right now. Uh, unless we're not cooling properly, I do not feel that we need to get low side measurements and. I also don't feel like burning myself down there. So we're just gonna go ahead and pull this out uh, right now. That's my low side cap. Yes. Reach around right there. Put that low side cap in position. Good. Charge is complete. Uh, we're gonna do a hose equalize. Or no, no, hose compensate. Hose compensate is basically going to install the amount of charge that uh, is contained within the lines because the scale for the refrigerant is internal and once it leaves the tank uh, ergo going through the lines the machine measures that as part of the installed charge and we need to oh we're already done okay we need to compensate for that by installing a little bit extra after the initial charge has been completed Close coupler valves and disconnect, blah, blah, blah. Yep, did that. Good to go. Okay, take our next cap, stick that guy on our fitting right there. And now, let's fire it up and see how she runs. Beginning engine restocking sequence now. There we 
go. AC on, full speed ahead. I'm gonna close the window some, and we're gonna hop in and check it out in a moment. All righty, so far so good. Compressor's running. The coolant has turned the appropriate red color uh, yet again. Got all my goodies out of the way. Let's head in the cabin, recheck temperature, and then uh, we're gonna back this thing out and hose it off and get it all nice and shiny like. And we can return it to our vehicle's owner and get this thing back out on the road after I fill up my complimentary washer fluid bottle refill procedure right here. There we go. Nice and full light. Beautiful. Rinse that off. Okay, climbing back in. Let's see what our thermal meters tells us. 46 degrees, 47, 48. I'll take that. It is cooling. And anywhere in the 40s is good by me. It's a very humid day. So I'm not expecting to get, you know, 38 degrees out of it, but uh, I'll take 40 something and some change right now. Oh, heck, look here. This is turned down in, uh, that was on 68. Let's turn it all the way down and put recirc on. I bet we're gonna lose a couple more degrees on the thermometer. I didn't even realize it was set at 68 instead of no. Not bad. Anyway, backing out, honks for safety. We have no illuminators on the dash. Uh, you uh, may have noticed that there was a check engine light when I first keyed this on, and that's because I had keyed the vehicle on at one point uh, during this process while the mass airflow was disconnected. So I set some mass airflow circuit codes. A uh, simple reset with the handheld scanner button that up, uh, no problem. Okay, good spot right here. Parking the auto. Let's go hose off the mess. We'll get this thing back to its owner. Can't do that. Ruin the engine. No. Oh, got a belt. You hear it? A little bit of squeaky squeal action. Yeah, we'll get all that coolant out of there. We'll get any trans fluid that got spilt out of there. Oh, speaking of which, I'm going to test drive this and check the level. It should be approximately 0.15 to 0.2 quarts low. It is of no matter. But I gotta do that from the bottom side because this particular truck has no transmission dipstick. So we'll take it uh, take it around the block, go drive it, get it up to temp, bring it back in, add a fifth of a quart of fluid, and we're all set here. Goodbye dirt, debris, and dust, and sand, and rat poop. Make it nice and shiny. Put water stouts in the paint. All right, guys, that's gonna be a wrap for this one. We're all set, engine's clean, AC is conditioning, everything's put back together. No nuts and bolts left over. We fixed a couple extra rando things uh, during our, our progress here, and this thing's good to go. So again, let me know what you think about these uh, Silverados with this AC system uh, in the comment section down below. Uh, while you're down there, please consider tapping that like and subscribe button. And most importantly, before I go, I would like to wish each and every one of you guys a fantastic day. See you guys later in a video, in a day, in a Silverado, in a transmission. Check it out. Low 40s and falling. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. 40 degrees, maybe 42 degrees. Yeah, right there at that green notch. That's 40. Nice. Super cool.